Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I am your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and tonight my co-host is Lori Hawkins. And we are joining again for closing out our series that we started a few weeks back on women in business and finance and uh, in honor of International Women's Day that's coming up tomorrow. So we started the series with talking about women and business and strategies and and actionable items that they can take to help their business. Uh, And I'd say help them personally, because I always think of our our homes as our business, because it's run like a business. You have budgets, you have income, you have responsibilities, you have work that needs to be done. There are certain uh, certain items that need to be paid every month. There's certain uh, items that come up every quarter or every every year, you know, in terms of taxes, depending on how you pay them. Uh, so your business, if even if you're not an entrepreneur right now, you are of sorts because you run your household. So for all the, and uh, it's still pretty typical that the, the women are the ones running the household. So for those of you uh, out there that are even stay at home women, uh, where you're not working outside the home, you are running a business. And all of this is for you. The last few weeks, we've been sharing different kinds of women uh, businesses, um, some pretty cool different uh, businesses that were around. Uh, different uh, uh, industries and professions that we didn't know we had, uh, like Brenda, one of the only uh, patent uh, qualified people for plants in Canada. That was kind of cool. Um, so we talked about all kinds of different women and businesses and, and successes and struggles that they had. And really, that's that encompasses the whole sh- the whole network, quite honestly, on a regular basis, where we talk about uh, any kind of here on financially speaking we talk about financial issues obviously um that's our thing uh that's what i do all day as an advisor and a bookkeeper and and i like playing with the numbers but that doesn't mean everybody has to understand finance you just have to understand your own stuff and we definitely know that you can understand your own stuff and the the entire network likes to put the rest of the pieces that I'm not an expert on together. So there, there are lots of hosts that you can plug yourself into and, and ask questions of if you need questions answered about business or relationships or child rearing or training your pets, all kinds of uh, different topics that make your entire life more happy and manageable and successful. And a happy, happy life is certainly what we're aiming for. And whatever that looks like for you is the right answer. So tonight we're going to share um, more strategies and tips and bring it all back together. Uh, Lori, as I mentioned, she's been on the show with me. She's my co-host. She's coming on uh, on a regular basis and she is going to be a regular co-host slash host. (laughs) And she's going to share a lot of tips and tricks and strategies and and actionable items and planning, uh, all the stuff that that I know when I talk to people, I I can kind of picture it swarming around in their heads and they just can't quite put the pieces together or the order that it should flow. Mm -hmm. That's what Lori's going to help us do. She's going to put all the pieces together and flow correctly so that we feel less overwhelmed and more confident in what we're doing on a daily basis. Because Mm -hmm. like I tell people, honestly, what I do, finance is easy. It's really just about uh, putting together a plan so from my perspective, it's easy. I put together a plan. There's no emotion about money for it or against it. We put the money plan together. We say, this is how much it's going to you know, look like to get to whatever the, che- the achieving goal is that we're looking at. It's kind of easy. It's the emotional part. It's the strategy. It's all the actionable pieces that you have to do to be comfortable and confident with what you're doing. And that Lori's going to help us connect all these dots. So Lori, Mm -hmm. welcome back to the show. It's exciting to have you here. I love being here with you, Kathy. It's like, we have not had near enough time together through COVID and this whole pandemic. And I just feel like this has been such a great opportunity to reconnect with you as well as just, you know, have these really important conversations. So thanks for having me. Super excited. You know, you said overwhelm. So um, the first show I'm going to do in April uh, when I come on and and, uh, host again is from overwhelm to organize. 
Oh, so nice, especially now coming into spring yeah. and we're getting ready to go back out into the world from COVID releasing us <laughs> yeah. of sort. So that's so great and and so needed. Perfect timing. I love it. And, and you I know, coming out of tax season too, or well, not coming out of it, kind of in the middle of it, maybe, but yeah. yeah I think <laughs> that just everyone's feeling like their tanks are a bit empty. So you know, how do we, how do we put some energy into that and refill the tanks? And, and, and I, it's awesome because it is a time of year where we're really focused on how are we doing with our finances and our taxes and all of that. So that'll be fun. Oh yeah. It's, it's always a good time to, I mean, anytime's a good time to look at your finances for me, but um, I think it's really a good time when you're, you're putting together a forced focus on it, like your taxes, mm -hmm. you, you don't have that date as a moving target that that's it it's set for you by somebody else who's got the authority to make you do it mm -hmm. so it's always a an opportunity and i and i do think of it as an opportunity rather than the burden it's an opportunity because honestly if and, and you know from a business perspective if someone's not forced to look at something they usually don't mm -hmm. so you can you know life insurance is an, is an easy example some people get life insurance and they have no idea what they have if it's still valid what it covers what it doesn't cover because it's set they think it's a set it and forget it mm -hmm. and nobody forces you to look at it again but you know the cra the irs those kind of people they force you to look at your finances because they want a piece of it but mm -hmm. it's also a good opportunity for you to look at them and say hey how am i doing <laughs> like am i on track and am i not on track how's my business doing yeah you know yeah. because i gotta file my business taxes as well yeah. and i think it's a great opportunity for people to just have a candid conversation with some, you know, professionals like yourself or accountants or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and make sure their plans are in place. And when they don't have a plan, it's also a great opportunity to say, I need a plan. And now is my chance to go out and find somebody like you to help them get that all organized. Yeah. So as you're saying time. that, I'm thinking, you know, what would be a really fun conversation? Um, well, fun for us and really important for people that are listening to hear is you know there's numbers like Kathy's talking about which in itself is a little unfamiliar to so many of us so last time we were together we talked about cash flow and income statement and and um break even all the all those fun things the other part of that when we talk about numbers is key performance indicators so those are some of the key performance indicators as a business owner. Um, but I think it'd be really interesting just to kind of explore for a little bit here while we're while we have this conversation. What are other key performance indicators that you work with? And I can throw some in too um, that are critical, maybe on the finance side. And then, you know, what are some other key performance indicators? Like even in your own business. What are those measurements for you that the business is moving strategically in the right direction? Yeah, absolutely. So some of the things that we look at, um, you want to know, we don't have a lot of inventory. So our business is, is a little bit different in right. terms of ours is our, our capital and our real um, important part of our business is our people. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone says the people are, and people are super important to the business, but the people in our business, they are the business. We don't have inventory. We don't, you know, we're not selling widgets and so on. So for us, it's efficiencies on time. And we have a tracking system software, which, you know, lawyers and accountants and so on all have. So our software tracks efficiency on time. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that, that Todd who manages the business, he looks at all the time. So he'll see, for example, me, my time is, you know, I clock in and I'm doing, you know, a financial plan, for example, and then I clock out and I'm, and I'm overdoing an incorporation or then I clock out and I'm doing, you know, T4s or HSTs or whatever the case is. So then he can see that, um, usually what he sees between us is sometimes I forget to clock out. Oh. <laughs> I clock over. <laughs> so I'm, I've gotten really, I'm 90% better. Like I'm 90% I'm there, but the odd day, you know how you get involved in something and the next thing you know, oh, I forgot to change my time. But Kathy, uh, that's a training issue and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know I'm the worst one, but I'm actually, I'm pretty good at it. I'm pretty good at it. So um, we, we now, it's literally a click of the button and, and he tracks all the time and he'll say, 
you know, you spent a lot of time and this is truthfully how we find out whether or not someone made a mistake with, the, you know, assigned the wrong client or whatever it was. Uh, you spent a lot of time doing an HST return. We know HST returns take this amount of time. You were twice as much time. Was there a problem with it? Did you forget to clock out? Was there more that you were doing than just the HST? So for us, it's an efficiency thing. And that's how we track a lot of the time efficiencies for us. Um, the other part that we track is um, uh, with our time efficiencies is I have uh, little timers and they're little hourglasses with different varying times on it. So when I'm working on a case and I think it should take me 30 minutes, I flip my 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. that way, anybody that comes in, they know not to interrupt because you're in the middle of a 30 minute timer to get something out. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's all about a big part of our business is efficiencies on, on key performance. Um, and, you know, also having organized, right? Yeah, I think that's a really, I think we could pause on that for a minute though, because, and I have seen Kathy's timers and yet, why don't we apply those in other areas, right? So it's, there's a lesson in how the financial industry and the accounting industry do it, where they track every minute of how, you know, exactly what they've done so that you can measure in your business the effectiveness of that. And I think as well, you didn't say it, I'm going to say it out loud for you. Kathy's hour, what, what Kathy's worth in the business on an hourly rate will be different as the business owner. So all business owners need to think about that. It'll be different than someone who's doing your marketing or someone who's admin or someone that's doing the books. And it's not to devalue anyone, it's to make sure everyone's in their zone of genius. And what is that task in the business worth so that then you measure that against your profitability later. But it's so important to do that because what might happen then at the end of a month is you look at Kathy's timesheet and say, huh, interesting. She spent 20% of her time in high value tasks efficiently. Whereas we actually, for the business to be successful, want Kathy to spend 60% of her time in a realistic way in those tasks. So it's even more, if you look at those numbers, there's more information in them than just how are we spending our time and are we being efficient? Do we have the right people doing the right tasks for the benefit of the profit of the business? Absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope and, that makes and sense you're, to everybody. <laughs> that, that is actually 100% right on. And, and I will tell you what we did find was, and I'll use the example of the automotive shop that we had, what mm -hmm. we did find was some guys were a lot better and faster and more efficient on brakes mm. and than other guys. So you might be very good on brakes and you can do them in a more efficient way than the other guy beside you and save time. Mm -hmm. So for you, you could get two brake jobs done to his one and a half. Mm. So we give the brake jobs to you this guy might be really good at taking transmissions apart. He's mm -hmm. a lot faster and more efficient at that. So we even you can break it down to even the kind of job to say, well, you can do it. But you know, when you're booking your and scheduling your day, we're going to give the breaks to you because we need to get them done as quickly as, as more efficiently as we can. We're going to mm -hmm. get this transmission job done. And then we're going to have somebody else do air conditioning or whatever, that that's their um, real blessing of genius, right? Mm -hmm. And we found too that, that because they're so good at it, they like doing it. So they're happier. And so, because they're happier, the customer experience is more powerful. And now we get into the measurement of customer loyalty, long-term customers. Yeah, it's, just, it's amazing how one tiny metric becomes so amplified when you map it out. Yeah, which is exactly what you and I talk about when I, even when I just say, you know, my, my little part in the world is finance, mm -hmm. but that connects to all the other parts in your life, mm -hmm. just like a healthy relationship has an effect on your finances. Mm -hmm. So all these pieces connect together and, and it's no different than business, how it is personally, you know, mm -hmm. you have a happy financial situation. You tend to be in a better mood. You treat people nicer, people around you are happier you know, you're able to go out for dinner more or do the things that you like to do because you have the finances to do it. And then all you have to do is change one little piece of the formula and you have one person who you're not happy with and that makes you more miserable. And then you're not as good at your job because you're not as efficient. You don't make as much money. Like mm -hmm. it's just, right. It's just, it's a never ending, it's never ending connection of all the pieces in your life and in your business. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So all to the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're up to our first break already, Lori. Holy smokes. Woo. All right. Well, we'll take a break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk to Lori about uh, some more, some efficiencies and some strategy ideas and and she's going to share some of her genius with us. So don't go anywhere. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I am your host, Kathy Cook-Noble, and my co-host is here tonight, Lori Hawkins. And we'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central. 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator, Kathy Cook-Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspire Choices Network. I'm your host, Kathy Cook-Noble, and Lori Hawkins is here tonight, our co-host and new uh, co-host contributor who's going to be on a regular basis, giving us some great insight into uh, strategies and uh, different kinds of planning techniques that are good for your business for sure, but they're also transferable into your life. And uh, Lori, we were, we were talking a little bit about the key performance indicators and we just started talking about that a touch before we went to the break and uh we talked you know I, we share a little bit about the the structure we have but um mm -hmm. what do you find that people can in their business because they're not two different people where you come to business and you're one person and you go home and you're somebody else uh hopefully <laughs> you're not because it makes it a whole lot harder <laughs> to a lot live life. harder a lot harder <laughs> There's, there's different things that we can transfer over from our, our business to our personal life, can't we, for helping oh. run smooth? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I was, um, so what skills are transferable? Is that, is that what you're, where we're yeah. going? Give us some ideas on uh, what you think, you know, for people out there who think, well, I'm either not in business or I'm an employee mm -hmm. or I'd like to get into business. Mm -hmm. um, what you know, how can I take what I even have at home and transfer that into being an entrepreneur? Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think last, I, I can't remember if we talked about it last time we spoke, but 7.4 billion new businesses opened in the North America in the last three years or something like the number is insane. And yeah. um, I think it says a lot about what we're experiencing, even with um, the great resignation and now skimpification and all of these fun terms that are coming is this whole conversation about balance, which is, it, it's not new, um, but some worldwide events, <laughs> many worldwide events have had people shift their lifestyle, question their lifestyle, um, and really lean into sort of who am I and how do I want to show up 
In fact, I had a call with a woman today, a young woman, and she started her own business. And she was sharing that she had been downsized through the pandemic. And she just sat there and said, huh, like, what are my skills? And what do I want to do with my life? Which I thought was just so interesting. I don't think I've ever just sat down and thought that because we just kind of had the path, right? Like you go do the next thing, go do the next thing. She actually paused and said that. And I think that's really good advice for for everybody is, is, you know, where are your passions? What are you skilled at? Yeah. And is there a market where those align? And I think that third one is a piece that a lot of people miss. I don't believe that you can randomly think that your passions can just create a business because if there isn't a market for that, keep it as a passion because we do all need our passions, right? So passion, you obviously need a skill set. And then where it merges that there's a market where you can be profitable, now you have a business potential. And the the one thing that has always been critical for me is there is no line in the sand between who you are as a person and what business you run. There's no line in the sand between your career, Kathy, and your home Kathy and something weird was going on when you and I started in business that you know leave your stuff at the door do you remember hearing that it's like yeah 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 how do you do that like yeah you just drop your baggage at the door when you come home from the office (laughs) kind of sent the impression be somebody different when you walk through the doors that's right And that's not a truth. The the reality is your best self is where you need to show up everywhere, your truest, most authentic self. And when you can honor that, your career will expand and your life will be free and fun. Yes. And I I think that people who live by that, where you've got to be somebody different at work as you are at home, carries a whole lot more stress. Mm-hmm. for them then they necess- they don't necessarily need to do mm-hmm. uh and and you'll be more successful mm-hmm. if you are your true self uh whether or not you're the right flavor for everybody doesn't matter um mm-hmm. but you will be more successful and you will be happier i think just being who you are and if honestly if you're in the job where that isn't a uh an option to be that then you're in the wrong job and mm-hmm. maybe it's time to start looking or maybe you're in the wrong industry um, you know, I, that happens for all of us. Like we've all been in stuff. I mean, I've been in, in all the years that I've been in business, there's been different businesses where I don't love it. Yeah. And, you know, you, and, and what I used to do, I'll tell you, was I play a little game with myself and I would say, okay, I'm going to do, uh, all the stuff I hate <laughs> that I don't want to be doing because I can, I'll plow through that to get it done as quick as I can. So I can get to the stuff that I like. So my reward was I got to the stuff that I like, you know, I, I do that with, I don't like strawberries, but if they're in a, if they're in like fruit salad or something, I eat those first. So I get the taste out of my mouth and eat something else. So it's the same way I do work is, you know, you want to get yourself, let's get rid of this instead of having it like eyeing at you all day. I just like, Oh, I'll do that first. Cause I don't like it. And then I get to my happy place and it it's going to happen to everybody. But if, Every day I find that I was in that, I'd be like, I'm in the wrong place because every day I'm regretting what I'm doing. Then you start regretting coming into work and then you go home and you're miserable and you carry it into your home life. And, and those are, those are the times when you got to ask yourself exactly what your, your girl did today. You know, yeah. what you know what, be? what's sad about that too, is that that means you're also not using your gifts. Yes. Right. If you're stressed all the time and feeling that then chances yeah. are you do have these internal gifts that are meant to be leveraged somehow. And yeah. the stress is when those aren't actually being leveraged with what you do and how you show up in the world. I think with it being International Women's Day tomorrow, we should talk about balance. Because I, I think that's a really um, important conversation for women, I want to say especially, and uh, sorry for all the men out there. I'm not dissing you. I just think um, 
I guess what I know for sure is I'm maybe men just don't feel open to talk about it yet and are having the same struggles. So we'll just say everybody, women mm -hmm. were starting to talk about it now. Um, and for a long time, I was, I just, I, I didn't love this conversation because um, it felt like people were looking at those scales of balance and trying to, to find this equality and it never exists. So then you're stressed and you're constantly searching for it because it's always kind of going like this somehow. And so I read a definition recently that balance is actually more about your energy feeling in alignment. I loved that. Uh, that's good. That's which is, good. Which is kind of what you're talking about. Like, am I doing tasks that make me feel energetic and aligned? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny. I was reading and I can't remember where it was. It was a while ago about work balance, uh, work life balance. Mm -hmm. And the, the argument was there's no such thing. Some days you're going to be busier at work. Some days you're going to have more time at home. It's not about having an equal balance all the time. It's about making sure you have opportunities in both sides. Love it. And I thought, yeah, that's right. Because there are, I mean, I can tell you tax time, we're usually really busy or right. up until the end of February, because you have this RSP. I hate saying it. It's the RSP season. I don't believe in it. I believe in planning 12 months out of the year, but <laughs> for tonight, I'll say RSP season. And, and there, there is a busy time there, but then you can, you know, after you get through that, you're like, ah, oh, and I'm maybe not as busy, but you're like, ah, oh, now's my chance to you know, do that rental at my house or take more time to read a book or, mm -hmm. or whatever the case is that you're looking at. And that's to me, after I read that, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. It's not like every day I have to have the equal balance between work and home. It's sometimes it's going to be crazy and go, go, go at work. And then there's going to be other times. And those are the times you should be grateful for when you have the opportunity to take a breath and, and enjoy your, enjoy the fact that you did a renovation at your house mm -hmm. and that you can be in it you know, instead of at work all the time. So I, I look at the balance stuff different now, I think, than I mm -hmm. used to, because uh, I used to think there's no balance at all between mm -hmm. my work and there probably wasn't, but uh, between work and, and work Kathy and home Kathy, but work mm -hmm. Kathy made me happy because when I was single and didn't have a family, I loved to work. And when I wasn't working, I was like, I don't know what to do with myself because I that's what I want to do. So for me, the... I think, I mean, you and I are similar that way is, you know, what's your passion? What's your pastime working? Like we love, literally both love to learn and grow and gain more knowledge and you play with the numbers. I don't do that part, uh, but you know, that's a passion. And so then it, in a younger years, for me, it was like, now I'm super confused because I love to go back up to my office and work at night. Yeah. So then am I out of balance? So this conversation to me says, no, that's balance because you're choosing and that's back to the energy piece, right? So I think, you know, less judgment on self. The one thing for that you said that I think everyone could buy into is being present wherever you are. Yeah. If I'm yeah. at work, I'm present there. And then if I go home, I'm present there. And I've really come to notice the times when I can do that, that yeah. I'm actually at home and I'm not thinking about a client or, you know, I'm at work and I'm not thinking about what's going on at home. When you can yeah. achieve that, that feels balanced. Yeah, I agree. And mm -hmm. that's not easy. That's, that's one of those things that's so much easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And, and I will tell you what I learned. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan. So I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan now. Uh, I wasn't allowed to have him as my favorite basketball player because my brother and I share him. So my favorite player is Larry Bird. And then we share Michael Jordan as our favorite, but I'm a huge Jordan fan. And I saw him and I mean, I've seen him over the years and he's a brilliant basketball player, but it's off the court that I really like him. Mm. He's just, he is always there. And, and he said that after one of the championships that they won and one of the reporters asked him about, you know, next year come out, he was right here, just right here in the moment right now. 
He's like, let's just stay right here. Mm. And I thought he just has it, you know? And I remind myself actually, when I find my mind wandering, I'm like, oh, what am I doing here? I should be doing something. I'm like, okay, just be Michael Jordan. You just be in the moment. <laughs> and it, for me, it works because it brings me back to, you know what? I'm just going to be Michael Jordan and I'm going to set my timer and I got 15 minutes to finish this. I'm in the moment and I'm going to get it done and then I'm going to move on to something else. So that's just my little uh, secret tip on how I keep myself in the moment is I just say Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I know that means it's time. <laughs> I've been wandering a little bit. <laughs> You're back. But, that's right. But you can use all kinds of tricks and tips to yourself to keep yourself on track. And uh, do you have any little that you want to share? <laughs> well, that I mean, I am big on, oh, we should talk about after the break, the Wim Hof stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, really, I, I've become, because I'm type A personality driven. So on purpose, I've integrated in, like, I love that Michael Jordan, I'm stealing it. Um, but okay. I've integrated in yoga and meditation yeah and cold showers in the morning and things like that, I do find keep me present. Yeah. They remind me and not just when I'm doing them, but they've taught me the practice of presence. So I catch myself more when I wander <laughs> off or I'm, you know, thinking future or I'm not a past thinker, but I probably spend more yeah. time in the future than I should. Um, so then it's like, okay, come back to present. Or if I'm not, you know, in that moment with the task I'm working on. So those are some things that I've found really useful for, you know, anyone that's type A, those things have been super helpful. Oh, that's perfect. Because that's exactly where we'll pick up. We'll take our second break of the night. Uh, we'll come back and we're going to talk about some of those very, very cool uh, strategies and techniques. So don't go anywhere. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and Lori Hawkins is here tonight, our co host, and we will be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F-words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F-Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F-word, fear, in the dust. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. 
You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network, and you might be listening to it live or you might be listening to it on our um, app. So you are able to download that on Android and on iPhone, and you can participate in the live version and join us in the chat room, or you can catch up on whenever you have the time on any of the 250 platforms or more that we're on. And that app is free and it's super easy to use. You download it, you can plug yourself into whichever show you want, either live or on the recording and, you know, play it back or, you know, uh, send questions into the host, whatever you want to do. So download the app. It's, it's great, uh, great tool, honestly. Uh, and it's a great uh, opportunity for you to learn a lot of tools and techniques that you need just for, you know, business and personal development as well. So I encourage you to download that. It's absolutely free. Uh, before we went to the break, uh, Lori and I were talking about, um, Lori mentioned something called the Wim Hof method. And ironically enough, Lori, I don't even think knows this, Brent Bashara is going to be on the show next week. And he is my lifestyle contributor. He comes on a few times a, a, a year and he shares with us and, you know, different uh, techniques that he uses. He's one of the few Wim Hof instructors in the world. And he's also sharing with us how you spring forward into the, the new season. So some of the stuff that he does. And uh, Lori was talking about this Wim Hof method. So it's a, it's a very, very cool uh, process. And Lori, you were talking about it with the cold showers and you've, you're, you're farther along than I am, I think on it, because I don't I'm stand in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting better on the, uh, uh, yoga and the meditation that I know that's not my strength because I have a hard time sitting still. So mm -hmm. that's a hard, that's a hard one for me, quite honestly. But I'm getting better with, because it's a breathing technique, it's a mindset technique, and it's cold water therapy. Mm -hmm. So when Lori talked about the cold showers, and it's a, it's a gradual process, you don't, you know, you see people doing this polar bear dipping and running, that's not what it is at all. Um, and we both are at the cold shower stage where we, you know, you turn the shower gradually. Now you can start with a cold shower. I'm not that advanced, but um, I, I always end on a cold shower. Um, I have moved into cold feet in the snow, walking through the snow, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's a really, it's refreshing actually. And it's it energizing because when we started doing it, um, so this is all again, really practices to be more present, I would say, um, and other things like um, clarity and energy and um, really good for inflammation, all sorts of things, which oh, yeah. obviously everyone will hear about next week. I highly recommend, I will be listening to that at the gym for sure. Um, but I think that the, uh, the, that ability to get present um, but I, I'm just shocked with the cold shower where I don't, I start warm as well and I end cold and it's so weird. Cause I was a hot shower girl. Like <laughs> I always had my hot shower. I would come in after and he'd be like, you can't even see in here with the steam. <laughs> I loved, I found it just made me feel better and cozy. And now with adding the cold, I cannot believe how awake you feel. And yeah. I didn't even realize that actually the hot shower was probably having me start my day a little less high frequency. I, I completely agree. I love the cold. And, and I find that I was always, I always prefer the cold to the hot. I'm not one of those people that's okay. like going to go on vacation and let's find a beach. I, I'm not a beach person. And mm -hmm. I, I live 10 minutes from the beach. Isn't that sad? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dislike the beach. It's not that. It's just, I yeah. prefer to not be hot, <laughs> but I, it was getting used to the cold and turning it to the cold water. And, mm -hmm. and it does, even though there's some mornings when you're super tired and you're like, Oh, I don't know if I want to do the breathing and this, that those are the mornings where I'm like, Oh, I needed it. Then that's, that was it. So you know, and I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to cop out and just turn the hot water off and then get out of the shower and do it tomorrow. No, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I graduate, like I turn it up and turn it up and, and I get it to 
you know, pretty cold. And, and I'm like, oh, this is so nice <laughs> when you're standing there because it, it, it really, it is, it really gives you some kind of energy. And, um, and we're not recommending everybody run out and do this no. right off the bat. Like it's a, it's a process and, and Brent will teach us uh, he is spectacular. And if you follow him on Facebook, Brent Bashera, I mean, he's, he's like serious. He's been doing this for seven years. He teaches it. He goes out in his bare feet on the pond, cuts the ice and sits in the cold water. Like he wow. is very, very good and his very disciplined. And he shares with us um, I, when he was on the show before, and just, we just started a conversation and how all his health issues were improved and because what Lori said is hundred percent right. Where you talk about inflammation is a, is a huge problem in health of your body. Right. And it helps to take away all the inflammation and, and keep all the blood flowing in the right places. And it's, it's pretty impressive. And I, I think it's cool. Like I, it's so cool. I think yeah. that no matter what, and you're right. I mean, you don't want to run out and start just incorporating this cold thing no. Learn next week. What I do think is so I would say critical for everybody, everybody. And then the impact to business to me is immeasurable is breathing. Agreed. I don't think I was breathing half of the day before. Nope. And that is where yoga, meditation, Wim Hof, all these things. If I don't do any of that, and yet a couple of times a day, just sit down and even do 10 breaths in and out consciously. It's a huge difference in the ability to execute, the ability to have clarity, connection, commitment, all of it. It's just so important. And no one's taught us that. And I know it sounds silly. Nobody taught you how to breathe. Nobody has taught us how to breathe. Yeah, you're right. And it's funny, Todd and I were just talking about, so, so I have four stepchildren for people who don't know, and, but I never had any of my own biological kids. So for me, I never did Lamaze classes or any of that kind of stuff. Cause there was obviously no reason for it. Um, but now that the oldest Tori is expecting in June mm -hmm. and, you know, you learn all these breathing techniques and I'm like, wow. So, cause you're more aware of it now. And I said to Todd, like, you know, they teach you the proper breathing through the pain and contractions. I'm like, it's out there. They just didn't transfer it from just a nine month pregnancy to everyday living. And I think, isn't that fascinating? Like it's there and it that's obviously that's works. Actually really fascinating. It's, it's left on the table with the birth. Yeah. You and it clearly works because they can tell again. you. Yeah. Isn't that something? And, and I would never have thought of it because that was never in my life. And now when they, the kids are talking about it and, you know, the new baby come in and whatever, and I'm like, they teach breathing, like they teach, how cool is that? But mm -hmm. they don't teach it for after. Nope. And I think you're, you're not you're right on. When I start business meetings now, I actually will start with a, a tiny breath exercise because I know that Again, because we haven't been taught it, I would actually put this in the, you know, critical key performance indicators of a successful business is that you're mindful on breathing and yet it's put in that sort of woo-woo world, right? Oh, yeah. it's like over there in the woo-woo. No, it's actually a critical strategy. So I've slowly started to implement it when I start doing business sessions and I laugh, I, I do actually work with an accounting firm, a large accounting firm that's like, okay, so today we're going to start with breathing. You can imagine how that went at first, right? Yep. <laughs> and now, uh, you know, a couple of years into this, I forgot to do it last month. I do a monthly with them. And it in the chat, someone typed, we haven't done our breathing almost like they needed me to, okay, grab, because it also grounds you where you are. Yeah. So, yeah. Isn't that funny? I, I never realized, and, and I was one of those people that never put any emphasis on it or, or thought anything about it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just as we started learning it through, really through the Wim Hof mm -hmm. with um, 
learning all the, you know, the mindset, the breathing mm. and the, the cold therapy, uh, it made me start thinking about it. And I was like, wow, do you know, and it's one of those things where you think, gosh, if I had known this 20 years ago, that, and it sounds so simple, it really would have changed a lot because it, it changes your emotion. It changes your energy. It changes. It helped. I think it, it helps you when you're, you know, a little agitated, you can help calm yourself down without people you know saying stuff or irritating you more you can just internally do it yourself and I, I'm just fascinated by it I think it's it's in, it's really incredible to learn mm -hmm. yeah me, so me. we are definitely going to talk more about that to a true expert on it next week he is amazing he's just amazing so uh, I'm excited he'll be he'll be back on next week and we'll uh, be able to do some more uh learning with that that's for sure mm -hmm. um i think we're up to our third break and final break of the night so we're going to do our third and final break of the night and when we come back uh Lori and i are going to wrap up some fi final thoughts and uh maybe share a little bit about stuff that we're doing together mm -hmm. and uh let you in on some of our little secrets so don't go anywhere you're listening to financially speaking on the inspired choices network with your host kathy cook noble and your co-host Lori hawkins and we'll be right back Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookKeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. And tonight, Lori Hawkins and I have been talking about different, uh, I'm going to say strategies for success in your business and in your personal life, because uh, we've talked about how those two definitely go together. And we, we, we were able to, to chat about a couple of passions that we have uh, that we share. And one of them is the Wim Hof method on uh, mindset and cold water exposure, as well as breathing techniques. It's a, it's a, it's a learning package and we're not encouraging people to just run out and do something part of it because what you heard here you want to do it properly to make sure you get the not only the best benefits of it but not cause any harm to yourself so uh next week i encourage you if you want to learn more about it you have to join me i've got brent bashara and he is one of the legitimate instructors for the wim hof method and i think there's only 50 in in all of the world um he's and he's been doing it for years uh the wim hof method has been around for 40 years um, it's, it's pretty spectacular stuff. Uh, and Lori, what else is going on? We were going to maybe share some, some, well, let's share, you know? you know, I know we, you know, we could just sit on here all day, all night. Um, well, we definitely have to share about the upcoming course. And so yes. Kathy and I, and then, and if we have time, maybe touch on mentorship with women coming into, you know, and collaboration, which, uh, the course that Kathy and I are going to share that we're super passionate about sharing together. And, and I think it's important to say, you know, coming into International Women's Day tomorrow, collaboration with women, like-minded women that you can, you know, lean into and you both bring your strengths, look for that. We don't need to be islands. And it's difficult when you're running your own business. I mean, Kathy and I have been talking about this for a year. So we understand it's, it's not of ease, but what we both committed to was the knowing that if we could bring our gifts together, our strengths together, we had a powerful way to help business owners. And so we just stayed with that knowing 
And, um, you know, even now we talked about it with you guys a few weeks ago, a month ago, and, um, you know, some tech stuff has kept us from fully un unleashing it to the world. Um, and that's part of the new era, the digital era as well, is really understanding technology and leaning into it um, back to your zone of genius, making sure you find the right people to do that. So we're on that um, exploration, I would say, and finding some really good people. So with that, we have upcoming strategy plus profit. The launch will be on strategyplusprofit.com. Um, we will be releasing it. Keep an eye out the next few days. It's almost fully ready. And um, I'll explain sort of my part and then oh, back over to Kathy of her part. Um, I'm the strategy even though she's fully strategy too, but uh, I'm bringing the strategy on a few, only a few key really critical pieces because we wanted something that very quickly you could take action on, incorporate in your business. And in 2022, after this first quarter has, has, is almost behind us to take a look at things and feel like you had something to, to give you that foundation and feel more in control. So you may already be a successful business owner, and these are just those few tools that you need to pause and spend some time on. You may be new. These are going to be really, really awesome for you. Or you may be in reinvention mode, which so many people are. And these are some tools that will allow you to sit down and think about the reinvention. So we're going to start with what's your vision? And that may sound simple, but so many people, so many business owners I know have been in business for decades and don't actually know their vision, which keeps you spiraling. And that vision may be reinvented at times and that's okay, but it's really important to get to that core, what's the vision for your business? So that every decision you make is wrapped around that vision. It gives you clarity, lets you make good decisions. So that's first part. Then it's about the core values that align with that as well. And also um, really understanding your customer journey. So you, you're going to walk through a process to define how you want your customers to experience every single touch point in your business so that you actually have a map of what they're going to experience with you. And then finally, you'll leave with a one page document that is your Bible. Oh, can't see it. That's cool. <laughs> it's, your, log in to see it. <laughs> it's your one page Bible of this is my strategic plan for the next 30 days, 90 days, one year. And, and of course you can um, course correct in that. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but you'll have it. You'll have that foundation. So now over to you, then we get into profit. And, and like Lori said, she also has the profit part. So it worked out beautifully on our collaboration to make it easier for us to understand each other. Mine was easy. I gave you the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow. And when Lori and I talked about this and designed it, we wanted it to be a no nonsense, no beating around the bush. Here it is. So this is immediately going to track your cash and track your money in your business. And you will know every day or every month or every week, depending on how much you do the, uh, the work and post the numbers, uh, it calculates everything for you. And it will tell you if you're doing all right cash wise, and if you're making money and that's what you need, no matter the status of your business. And that was the key, key part for Lori and I, we wanted to make it, this is it, this is going to work. We're not going to tell you what to do and that we're going to do something here it is. And it works. So go ahead. It's implemented in your business. You don't have to figure it out on your own. You don't have to figure out the formula for the income statement. It's already there and it's done. So I'm excited about it because I know it, it will save a ton of time for people in their business. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're just down to a few seconds left on the show. And, and I know Lori's going to talk a lot more about mentorship and uh, uh, accountability in your business. And uh, you really want to plug yourself in uh, every month. Lori's going to be on to share some of that uh, insight with us. So make sure you plug it in to your calendar or get on the app and you can, if you miss it, then you can uh, listen to it. In the Thank, you, Kat. Thank you for choosing to listen to financially speaking radio show. 
Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.